Hi guys, welcome back to your not so ordinary scrapbook channel. Um, today I decided that, or tonight, <laughs> it's actually evening. Um, I decided that I was going to challenge myself to do something a little bit different. Um, I chose two pictures ahead of time. This is my grandma. This is probably 10 years ago, I would imagine. She is, so she was probably about... 80s she was in her 80s in this picture she's in her 90s now and um she was visiting me um this is before her stroke and um she was visiting me for a couple weeks and we were talking about genealogy because she she is very interested in genealogy she's written two books about her family history and um, she has a, a sister-in-law or some relative who is even bigger into genealogy. So she's even more um, interested in um, discovering our family history. And um, if you don't know, my family grew up, my grandma, well, I guess to like make a long story short my grandma was born in minnesota but um her father worked for a um he worked for a newspaper he was a printer and um so they moved a lot um because she grew up during the great depression and um so they moved from Minnesota when she was a young girl to Wyoming and Montana area. And then um, she stayed out west for most of her life until after, um, until she became older and retired and she moved to the Midwest to be close to um, my mom and dad but this relative and I can't think of what her name is because I'm not close to her um I really don't know her other than the fact that I was given by my grandma this binder of family history that dates back um several generations and um so my grandma and I my grandma was visiting and I was looking through the binder and she was like talking to me about different, telling me different stories and stuff like that, or stories that she knew that had been passed down. Um, just because I'm interested in that as a scrapbooker. Well, she, she had, um, as we were looking through this binder, I noticed that one of her relatives was buried and had lived and was buried in Clinton, Illinois, which is not even about half an hour from here. It's probably about 35 minutes. And um, that's actually where Hunter lives now, which is, is really, it's really interesting that he lives there now. But um, so when we noticed that, when we're looking at the binder, I said, Grandma, I said, there is a historical society in Clinton. Do you want to go? And she said, yes. She said, I, I do want to go. And so we, um, the next day we decided that we would go to Clinton and, and go to the historical society. And we did. And when we walked in, it's kind of a funny story because our relative last name is Moore, M-O-O-R-E. He is our distant relative. His name is Thomas Moore and, um, or C.H. Moore. Well, his first name is Charles. So Charles, um, is it Charles? I think it's C.H. Moore is what his name was. It was Charles, is it Charles Moore? I don't know, but I forget. I need to look at the paperwork. Well, anyway, when we walked in the Historical Society and we said, 
They asked who our relative was, my grandma told them, and they almost had a heart attack because the founder of Clinton, Illinois, had the same name. And they said, well, what? You're a distant relative of the founder of our town. And and my grandma said, no, I don't think so. <laughs> and, she, well, they looked it up and there were two moors in town around the same time that had the same name. One of them is my relative and one of them is the man who owned most of the town. So we were able to um, read up a little bit of history on my distant relative. And I guess I should find out what his actual name is. I Maybe it's C.W. Moore. I don't know, but I have the, I have the genealogy report because they copy, they made copies of all the information about our relative and they gave them to us. But, um, they told us where his house was and he did have one of the first, um, houses in Clinton, Illinois. So they showed us. And so I took a picture of grandma. This is the house here, um, that my distant relative lived in and um I forget what his job was uh, I guess I need to research this a little bit more before I do my journaling I can still do the scrapbook page but I forget because it's like I said this these pictures were taken 10 years ago so this is his house and then we also did a close-up of the house and, um, so this is, and my distant relative was a prominent salesman, I think, um, or owned a store or something like that. I can't exactly remember, but he was not, he had wealth. I, he wasn't like rich, like the originator of the town, but he, he, he was well known and he was um an upstanding citizen other than the fact that i think he and his wife were one of the first couples to get a divorce in clinton illinois so i think because somebody cheated on somebody <laughs> i do remember that so it was kind of a comical story but they did print it out and back then they printed that stuff in the newspaper believe it or not so there are were newspaper clippings that the historical society made copies of and it just was it was comical to read and it was you know can't do anything about your ancestors right so um so i think i'm going to scrapbook these today um sorry that the introduction was a little bit long and drawn out but i wanted to give you the backstory of these pictures um, I do have this branding strip and I thought that that would go nicely with these pictures. And I wanted to challenge myself to find papers that went along with something very, very small, like a branding strip and using that as, you know, one of the main embellishments on the layout. So this one says, hooray, it's today, fine little day, just love. So I thought that that was a really cute thing to use. And this one, unfortunately, ripped. But I only usually use one little piece at a time. So what I'm going to try to do while I film is I am going to try to find papers that go with this. I don't have any papers, like, picked out. Um, although I do kind of like this one. I do like the flowers on this and how it kind of goes with this. I think this goes nicely together. Um, and there is a little bit of orange tone. My grandma is wearing really bright orange pants. So um, I kind of wanted something that would like blend in um, a little bit. Um, there are some orange, like, this says days like these. 
there's a little flag I could use. Um, let's see if there's any other. I do believe it was summertime when we went, um, when she visited. Going places would be relevant. Um, so there's probably enough stuff in here that I could kind of like that. Um, but anyways, my grandma was so she, she gets excited about things like that as an author. Um, she, she has always been so fascinated with history and, and it really tickled her to, like, to learn about her ancestor, learn more about her ancestor while she was here. And, um, and it was fun for me, too. It was fun for me to discover, you know, these little tidbits that I obviously did not know. <laughs> and I really had no idea that I had any relatives in the state like any ancestors in the state at all, because my family originated out West. And even I was born out West. So I was born in the Pacific Northwest. Um, but um, we ended up in the Midwest. <laughs> That's where we ended up settling. And my family ended up like, Moving out here, I still have quite a bit of family in the Pacific Northwest um, on my grandma's side and on my grandpa's side. Um, and they still live out there. Um, I have not been to that area since I was a baby. Um, we never, we went as far as Las Vegas because my grandma lived there when I was a child, um, before she moved near my mom and dad. Um, but that was the farthest that I, um, farthest west that I went other than t we went into California. Um, when I was in college, um, Joe and I went to California to visit his sister and we also flew out to visit my grandma because, um, he had won free airline tickets at the grocery store. We, um, I remember we used to always go shopping. We, we lived together, um, our last couple of years of college and, um, we um we love to go grocery shopping at night. Um the grocery store that we went to was open 24 hours. And um and we lived in the town that our university was um in. And I remember them having this drawing and Joe and I both signed up for the drawing. It was for free airline tickets. And we won the airline tickets. Or he won them. He won the airline tickets. I didn't win the airline tickets. But we decided that for spring break, we would take a trip out west to visit his sister and to visit my grandma. And it was it was a fun time. It was it was pretty fun. Definitely challenging at times. We had plans to get married out there, which was kind of funny. When you think about, but my grandma, because we were young, we were very, very young, and she, my grandma got wind of it, and she was like, she came in to talk to me, and she said, this cannot happen. Your parents will kill me. And she said, you, she's like, she's like, you cannot get married without their knowledge. Now, Joe and I were both adults at the time. So we very well could have, <laughs> you know, told my grandma that we're adults and we can do what we want. And we did eventually get married um, a couple years after that. 
But, um, and I know that my mom and dad actually commented when we did get married that we should have probably, it would have been a lot cheaper had we gotten married in Las Vegas. But, um, but that's really the last time that I've been out there other than, um, to visit Matt and Yessie in Arizona. And we do plan a trip out there soon to, um, to take them to Disneyland because that has, that is what, um, Yessie has wanted for a really long time for her birthday. And I told her that once the wedding was over and, um, things settled down a bit and they were back from their honeymoon and, you know, so probably in the spring we'll go. We are going to try to plan to do it in December, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen because Scott has carpal tunnel surgery scheduled for right around Christmas time because that's when his company that he works for shuts down and he won't have to take FMLA time to... um to have that surgery and he needs to have it done on both hands and or both wrists so um that will be we won't be able to tr to travel during that time period and um and I think it's okay we can we can go in the spring in the springtime but I don't want to go around their anniversary because it'll be their first anniversary and I don't want to intrude on that. So. But I think it'll be a fun time when we do go because none of us have, have been to Disneyland before. Um, we've only ever been to Disney World. So it'll be... It'll be fun when we do grow. And we want to take Satan. And hopefully we'll take um, Mini Jordan too. But that also, it also depends on whenever Hunter and Jordan decide to get married as well. So. Because I'm not sure. And it would be great if we could take Esmeralda. But I don't know how that's going to work with, like, out-of-state things such as that. So, I hope we can take her at least to Missouri sometime to meet my grandma. Because there's no way my grandma is able, will be able to travel to meet her. Unless we take her to Missouri. But... We'll cross that bridge when we get to it, I suppose. Um, so I think I'm going to use this here. It's going to be the plan. And then I'll start building my page. So I... I don't know if I want a title across the top or not. I'm not exactly sure. I need a drink, sorry. So I don't know the last time I talked to you, but um, our visit on Saturday went extremely well. Um, we met with the lawyer last Wednesday Hunter's lawyer and um, I got the impression that um, she was talked to after that after that um, that meeting by her lawyer because um, she was not completely honest about some of the stuff that she told her lawyer and 
and it this is making a big mess this is not this is winding like up in a circle and it's not working right Tape is coming off on the roller. There we go. I think we got it right now. Just take some time to do this the way that it needs to be done. Is that right? No. Why it's not? There we go. That's what I want. But um, the visit went very well on Saturday. It didn't start out very good. Um, and I was like, uh oh. I didn't real. She never said that her lawyer talked to her, but I suspect that she did. Um, just because there were some changes made that were suggestions that Hunter and I had that we told his lawyer that were made at the visit. So I am assuming that, that she was talked to, but, um, because there were different toys. Um, the one thing that still bothered me and it kind of broke my heart was I had brought some board books to read to her and she, did not allow me to bring them in the house. Um, not sure why. I don't know if she has a problem with people reading books to her children, but um, children who are read to um, become better readers. And it's something that I'm going to do when she comes here, I'm going to read to her all the time. I read to Minnie Jordan all the time and I read to Kaysen all the time. So it's just something that I do. Um, but I did not, um, I wanted that, I wanted Saturday to remain calm and without arguments or you know a problem so I just put the books back in the car um and we went inside and she was kind of you know nasty at first when we first got there but then she um changed her tune about halfway through and she she seemed a lot more pleasant to be around and she didn't discuss their past relationship it all had to do with Hunter and that or all had to do with the baby. Uh, and that was nice. That was very refreshing. And it wasn't. Um, it was how. How visits should be. You know my. my um, what I picture. You know a visit to be. So and. I got to spend a lot of time with my granddaughter. And so did Hunter. With his daughter. And um. She walked me several times, still learning how to walk, and um, and that's exciting to watch. And she um, she's still falling down a lot, but it's okay. She's she's learning. She's doing really good, and just cute as can be. Every time I see her, she just gets prettier and prettier. She's just just the cutest little thing, and I just completely am smitten with her you know like every grandma would be with their granddaughter and so um trying to find a was this one empty too well i really want to use a little a small tape runner if i can Interesting. Oh, maybe I will. 
I'll have to use this. The big beast is what I call it because it's so large. Um, so it was a good time. It, we had a good time. And then she did cancel the pumpkin patch. She didn't, she didn't want me to be there. Um, and I didn't argue with her about it. You know, she, I think that she had plans to be, she wanted her and Hunter just to go and Hunter's lawyer said that's not a good idea. Um, so that didn't happen, but, um. But Sunday, we didn't end up going because Hunter and Jordan ended up... I had the kids overnight. Um, Jordan, I'm wondering if... <laughs> it's almost my fault that that they got food poisoning. Um, or it's a possibility. Um, not necessarily my fault, but... Um, when we got done with our visit on Saturday, Hunter and I were starving and Jordan was here watching her two kids and um, Jensen because I had told um, Jensen's parents that I would watch him overnight as well on Saturday. So I knew I was going to have all three kids overnight. And Jordan had plans with her girlfriends Saturday night. And then Hunter was just going to go home and work on their lawn um, because it needed attention. And, um, I don't know if he ended up doing that or not, but we were starving. And so we ran through Culver's and all they wanted was cheese curds. That's all that Hunter and Jordan wanted. And I did not get cheese curds for myself. And, um, I got something else. I think I got onion rings or something like that. And, um... So we got back here and they went out um, or she went out with her friends and I had the kids. This is doing this again. It's getting gummed up. I don't know if this is a problem with this system or not. Some people really like it and some people don't. And I'm not sure how I feel about it right now. It seems like. I mean, I can see how it would be a benefit because it holds a lot of tape. But I don't really like the size of it. There we go. Come on. There we go. That's working. So Sunday morning, or Sunday, we were supposed to, we had another visit scheduled. Um, and Hunter called her and said that him and Jordan had food poisoning, or they were sick. They were both throwing up. And I kind of assumed it was food poisoning, and I wondered if it wasn't those cheese curds from from Culver's because they were the only ones who had those. But um, so we didn't end up going on Sunday, which makes me sad because we had such a good day on Saturday that it kind of made me sad that I didn't get to see her on Sunday because I just miss that little girl so much. It's, um, it's interesting how, how, um, well, I, you know, my heart ached the whole time that I didn't get to meet her, um, before we knew for sure that she was ours. And, um, 
don't know where my stapler is. I'm having trouble finding things. Um. Hmm. I do not know. Well, that's very strange. I'll deal with that later. I plan to put a little staple here. Unless I have other staples in here. I have two tiny attachers, so I don't know why I'm having difficulty finding stuff. It obviously didn't get put away where it was supposed to be put. Because I don't think anyone was in here. Um, now that the kids are older, well, they're adults they don't come in here and borrow my stuff anymore. They used to when they were little, but they would get into my stuff, but they don't anymore. Now that they're adults. Um, hmm. Well, maybe I'm gonna have to use the enamel gloves instead. Hold that down. Whoops, didn't mean to bump that. There's some puppy owls. So anyways, I was happy that, um, about the way that day went. And it sounds like Hunter did tell her, um, when he had to cancel that, um, we could reschedule for this week, this weekend, if she wanted to. And, um, I don't know if she ever got back with him and wanted to do that or not. Um, but um, I know we have plans on Sunday. Um, the pumpkin patch is the local pumpkin patch it's not too far from here um is having like a farm day on sunday and jordan wants to take um mini jordan and squish to that and they're gonna have music and you know and I think it'll be fun for the kids, too. Um, but none of the guys work on Sunday. So we just decided that we just kind of make it a family affair and do that on Sunday afternoon. Um, we generally go to the pumpkin patch every year as a family. Um, it's just a tradition that we've always done. We'll, we'll go to different ones. We usually go to the Apple Barn um, near Peoria. Um, but this year, I think we're just going to stick close to home and, and go to the one that isn't, that's close for them and close for us. It's kind of halfway in between for both of us. So we can meet them. So, halfway. Um, so, it'll be fun. I, I know it'll be fun. And and it'll be, you know, Squish's first taste at fall. <laughs> His first pumpkin. Our first picture is with pumpkin. Sweetie. He just is so... He's growing up so fast. He's... It's going to be nine months old in, um, the end of this month. And 
It just blows my mind. He's already eating, like, solid foods. Um, he, I, I fed him pancakes on Saturday, and he did fine. He did really good eating them. He's got two teeth on top and two on the bottom, which is funny because our granddaughter, who is a month old, um, well, she's, or a year old, I'm sorry, she's 13 months old because, um, yeah, she turned 13 months old last week. And um, she only has her top two teeth just recently pushed through. And she has only, she only has two teeth on the bottom. So Kaysen's teeth are actually out further than our granddaughter's. Um, but it's not really too surprising to me that, that, um, that that's the case because all of my kids got their teeth really, really late. They, um... I'm not sure exactly why, but they, they, all of them were late getting their teeth, so. I'm going to put this underneath here, but I think I'm going to cut it like this is just some packaging. I like the pattern of it. So that is going well. I was up so late last night. Oh my gosh. I was working on a project and I, um, that was necessary for my job. And, um, I, I was up way, way, way too late. And, and I lost track of time. And I think it was like four o'clock in the morning when I went to bed. And that was just stupidity on my part because I did not want to get up this morning. I think I ended up sleeping till 1030. And then, um, and I did take a nap today too. So I just... Not been functioning very well today because I, because I stayed up so late, but it did help me where I didn't have to. Um, work on the project today, um, so I mean I can't really complain that you know. That I stayed up late working on it, but, wow, I do I the older I get the the more I hate late night. I do not like staying up late. Not a fan. When I was young, I could do it. But now that I'm older, I really need my sleep. <laughs> I would rather get up super early than stay up really late. I find that the older I get, the more my brain just, like, turns to mush. The later it gets. So. My car is still not done. I'm so frustrated. I hope it's done tomorrow because I have a doctor's appointment on Thursday and I need to drive myself and the guys are all going to be working and I don't want to have to drop Scott off at work so I can take his car 
to my appointment in Springfield. But um, from what the mechanic said, there is a radiator screw. I think it's, or exhaust screw. An exhaust screw in the engine that they are trying to get out. It's causing a problem in the engine because the screw is in the engine. And um, so I don't know if it's a loose screw that came out of the exhaust and fell into the engine, um, but they're having difficulty getting the screw out. And, and until they get that screw out, um, my car will not be done. And, and I miss having a vehicle. Not that I go that many places, but it's, I'd like to have, you know, that option if I, if I want to go somewhere. <laughs> I probably won't, but, but. It makes it easier, especially like if you have a doctor's appointment or something like that. But we'll find out tomorrow. Is there anything else I want? It'll be right here. Maybe this heart. So. But I ended up taking a nap today because I couldn't, I couldn't stay awake. And, you know, when you take a nap and, like, you have these dreams. And I have the weirdest dreams, I swear. So, sometimes in my dreams, like... They feel like very, very real. And in this dream, there was a ton of food. And I do not know why there was so much food other than the fact that I might have been hungry in my dream. <laughs> but I did eat lunch today, so I don't know why I would be so hungry. But, um, like, there was fried chicken. There was potatoes. There was... What else was there? I think there was spaghetti. Um, but the, it was like all over my house. But it wasn't my house. It was somebody else's house. And I don't know whose house it was. It was like a house that I've never been in before. Um, and there were other people in my dream that I did not know. But like I knew them in my dream. But I I don't know them like, I don't even, like, thinking of my dream, I don't recognize who they would be or, you know, I don't know who they were. But, um, but I know for sure that there was a woman and my kids were there and Scott was in the dream and they were, like, packing up for work. They had to go to work. And they were, like, grabbing food. And this woman was talking about some diet she was on. I know that. Um, and, like, nobody wanted the fried chicken because it was, like, not on their diet or something like that. I don't know. But, like, the fried chicken was, like, something that I did not make. And it, I don't know, it kind of looked like KFC, to be honest. But, um... But it was a really weird dream. And then in this dream, like, do you ever have dreams, like, within a dream? It's so weird. So, like, I'm in this house, and I'm, like, wondering while I'm in this house why I am there. But I live there, but I'm wondering why I'm living there with these people. Like, there's other people living in this house. And why my family is living with these other people in this house. And, and I'm thinking about like, I'm reflecting in my dream about this B 
big house that I owned and I I gave back to the bank or something. I don't know why I would even think about that because I have never given a house back to the bank. Never. <laughs> I have never done that. So it's like, I have no idea why. And it was like a mansion. Like the house that I was reflecting back on that I owned, like was this, like it had a hot tub inside. It was like brick and like it was, there was a room like specifically for this hot tub. And there was like these big giant walk-in closets. And there was this one room that like the person who had owned it previously before us, like a, in my dream, like reflecting back, I don't think we lived in there very long. That's all I can think of is like, we lived in there, like in my dream for like a couple months and then we just decided to leave and left the house like we didn't I don't know like for sure in my dream if I gave it back to the bank but somehow like in my thoughts that was like what I did but we never told anybody because it was like it was like we lived there and then we just left and it was just so bizarre I, I do not know why I have weird dreams like this at all, but I woke up, like, it felt really real, and I was like, why did we ever give up that house? Because it was such a beautiful house. It was a mansion, and, like, the people who had lived there before left all their stuff, and there was, like, this room down in the basement that had, like, all kinds of stuff in it, and it was all very organized, and and neat and like there was another room that had like all these golf trophies and like pictures on the wall like the guy whoever owned it previously was like an executive of some sort but he was also a golfer and like um and like we would find all these like treasures you know in this house and I was like why did we ever you know move from that house I don't understand and, like, in my dream, like, the mortgage of that house was, like, $500 a month. And I was, like, of this mansion. And I was, like, well, how could we not afford $500 a month? That's not very much. You know, if we moved and we gave it back to the bank, why would we do that for $500 a month? And I was just, like, contemplating all this, like, I was really stressing myself out in this dream, apparently. But, um... It's just, I woke up thinking that, like, why did I do that? Why did, why did I give this mansion away that, like, was full of all this treasure and it was such a cool house and all this stuff? And, and I woke up and I'm like, what the heck? I'm like, none of that is real. Why are you even? <laughs> oh, my gosh. I don't know. This does anybody else have dreams like that where it like feels so real and then you wake up and you're like oh my gosh what the heck why was I stressing through that whole dream about something that never happened never existed never like it's so weird it's so bizarre I'm like I don't know what I have been worried about lately that made me think of like any of that because I don't even know anyone who, like, oh, I know what it was. I know what triggered that. Okay, so, Yessie, I mean, this must have been what it triggered. What triggered this whole dream was Yessie had posted on Facebook this meme that said something about um, what was wrong with me in the eighth grade. Um or why didn't someone tell me in the eighth grade that I should, should purchase in 2009, I should purchase all these foreclosure houses or something like that. It was a meme. And I thought it was funny because like she was in the eighth grade in 2009. But, um, and 
And that's what must have triggered that dream. <laughs> was that meme. That's kind of funny when you think about it. That's the only thing I can think of that would have triggered that dream, but... Whatever, that house was really nice. I mean, I can still see it. Like, it was so real that I can, like, see it. I can see the other house, too, that I was living in. I don't know what it looked like on the outside, but... Or who the people were that lived in it. Um, that we apparently lived with, but... That was definitely... That's interesting, to, to say the least. Whenever I have really weird dreams, and I always tell Scott that, like, I'll say, oh, man, I had this really weird dream, and, and I'll tell him about it, and he'll be like, what kind of cough syrup did you take last night? <laughs> I'm like, none. I didn't take any cough syrup. <laughs> He's like, you need to stay off the NyQuil. <laughs> Which I don't... I rarely even take NyQuil. Only, like, if I have a cold, a bad cold. And it doesn't really help with the cold symptoms. It just kind of just knocks you out. It's probably all the alcohol in it. So I was laughing with Jordan yesterday because mini Jordan, he cracks me up sometimes. Um, he's very cognitively aware of his surroundings. And even though he, he, um, he has difficulty with mobility and he is, um, nonverbal, he knows what's going on. Um, he's very aware of what's going on in, um, so I figured out because he, when I would feed, he's tube fed. And when I feed him, he likes to roll. Like I'll hook him up to his machine and he likes to roll um, all over the floor. And he has been known, like on Saturday, he, he actually pulled the tube out and there was like formula going everywhere. I mean, he just... He doesn't realize he does it, but he, um, you know, nobody likes to be hooked up to stuff and he wants to roll around and, um, but he, I, I figured out that if I read him books and sit beside him and read him books while he's eating, he stays, he stays, um, in the same position. He doesn't roll around. So, um, I read him like three stories. I was on the third story and I thought he fell asleep. So I was like, oh, he fell asleep. So I went to get up and sit on the couch and he looked at me like he was faking, he was faking sleeping like, so I would stop reading. And he, like, had the biggest grin on his face. And I was like, you stinker. You wanted me to stop reading so you were faking that you were asleep. I'm like, and so I told him, I'm like, you're a little turd. <laughs> I'm like, is that what you do at school? <laughs> is pretend you're asleep so the teacher will stop reading. He's a smart cookie. That kid, I'll tell you, he cracks me up. He has the silliest sense of humor, but I get it because it just, he's, his sense of humor is so much like mine. 
he can get me laughing so hard. Just the things that he does. He has a way of communicating. Even though he's nonverbal, he can communicate with me quite well. And he does say some words. I mean, I he does say hi. Um, and he can control his arm to an extent to, like, slightly wave at you um, when he says hi. Um, but... Um, he can say hi pretty clearly, so you can understand, but I just always encourage him to keep talking, like, when he, when he, even when he is not understandable, I'll tell him, you know, I'll encourage him to continue talking, I'm like, keep telling me, keep talking to me, and tell me what you're thinking, what you're thinking, you know, and he'll just babble on, and and it's good practice for him because um, the more he practices, the more likely he is to be able to unintentionally say a word or be able to form, you know, words. Um, like he learned how to say hi. Um but and and those thing those milestones are just like they just make me so proud you know they're just tiny little my, milestones or benchmarks but they they just um they bring me so much joy because he he works so hard you know trying to communicate with people in some way and he does use a switch at school. So, I mean, he he does communicate yes and no with the switch. Um, hopefully, as he gets older, they will, you know, teach him how to use a keyboard. But the problem with spastic cerebral palsy is they have very jerky movements and it's difficult for them to um, use their hands to type on a keyboard. Um so I don't know um, if they could integrate some sort of technology where um, it's connected to his brain so he can communicate um, with people because I know he has a lot to say. And I think that he is extremely intelligent. He just needs a... He just needs help finding a way to to make it possible for him to communicate. So, um, technology is pretty exciting, especially for, for, you know, ex exceptional kids that, um, that really, really need it or adults as well. But, okay. So I'm going to write grandma. Uh, well, I want to put the Moore house for sure. So I'm going to put, um, oh, and I'm going to have to make this Q and O by cutting off. I like to doctor letters because I don't, I'm cheap. I don't want to use like, I don't like to waste letter stickers. So I just make them into what I need. And that's what scrapbooking is all about. Usually I will put the the little, like, there's usually like a little dot or something left over from the, the Q tab. And I just put it on the top and no one's the wiser. So more is spelled M-O-O-R-E. And I don't think I have an E, but I can use this F and then just put a little, I can make an F into an E. So I'll just do that. And then I'll cut, well, here's one that I've already cut. So I can put that there. So 
So what TV programs have you guys been watching? Um, I have been watching Call the Midwife. The new season is out and I've been enjoying it. I, I always enjoyed that show. I've been watching it from the very beginning. I do own the first like four seasons. Um, I own a box set. Someone bought it for me for Christmas, um, one year. Um, and I really enjoy watching people have babies. <laughs> it's interesting. The only thing that I noted that I was talking to Scott about was that, um, that I find interesting is like, like most shows, they have a political agenda and a lot of the things that they talk about on, especially I noticed in this season of Call the Midwife is very politically correct and very inaccurate, um, as far as historically, um, like in today's time, it would be accurate. But, like, I think this last season is in the 1960s, and they're talking about, um, you know, like, um, diversity and things like that. And back in the 60s, they did not discuss diversity or, like, making sure that people were treated fairly, um, it was not, and, and some of the, like, they were, I kind of got the inkling, especially with the birth control shot, or was it the birth control shot? No, the, the smallpox shot, I think it was, either smallpox or, or measles, no, it was a measles shot in season 11. It was a measles shot and how people were were like making comments but it was very relatable and very like the dialogue that they used is what I've been reading about like people's opinion of the COVID shot so um I just kind of felt like it was it was inaccurate like historically inaccurate and I don't like shows that are historically inaccurate to send a political message to people um I mean, I'm all for the COVID shot. I've had the COVID shot. Um, but I just think that when we change history, especially in the entertainment industry, um, younger the younger generations don't realize that history. They think that that's how history was, and it's not. It's not accurate. Um, so... I don't know, but I still enjoy it. I mean, it's still, it's still a very, very good show and, um, and I still have several episodes and the book that I'm still continuing <laughs> reading that I've just like, it's a summer book that it's called Book Lovers. I have wanted to be done with it for quite a long time and I've had a very difficult time getting into it. Um, just because I almost need like a murder to take place or some sort of mystery or some sort of crime that needs to be solved for me to stay interested in a book, I think. And this is just a sappy love story. And, um, it's really hard for me to stay connected to that. Um, especially with my relationship status right now is not like, I, I'm not interested in reading about, like, lovers or anything like that, really, right now. So, um, so it's not like, um, it's, it's hard to get into. But I am pleased to say that I am three quarters of the way through the book and I am finally getting a little bit more interested in the book. Um, I, um, it is getting more interesting. I mean, nothing really like, I do hope that the girl, the girl, the heroine of the book or whatever, she does end up with the guy that is so much like her. Um, I think that that's like, 
I don't think that she, the connections that she's making with other guys in the book, um, are, are who she belongs with. I think that she should, she should pursue the relationship of the guy that is like the male version of her, um, just because they have this really special connection and I do, so I'm rooting for them, um, and I hope that they end up together in the end. Um, but I'm excited also to get done with the book. So I can start the next book. Um, our next. Um, our next book club book. I just received in the mail. Um, and it is. It's something about irregular witches. The something in the title it's something a regular witches or something like that so I'm pretty sure it's like a fantasy type novel um obviously there's witches in it um it's a fall read um I don't know if I will feel a connection with that book or not um I enjoyed reading Harry Potter um, but there was a lot of mystery and intrigue in that series. I don't know what is going on with this. This I haven't even read the back of the book yet. So I really don't know, like, what it's about at all. Um, and I haven't taken the time. I just, it just came in the mail yesterday. So, but that's our, um... September, October book for book club. And I'm hoping to get the summer book done soon so I can start the new book. But man, I wish they'd choose a murder mystery. Like I always, I in like we recommend books for book club and, um, and then the, like the main the head of the book club, she'll ultimately choose like what book we're going to read. And I don't mind because I, I love to read. So it doesn't really matter what book that we, that we choose. Um, but it is, um, I always recommend a, a murder mystery. Um, just because those really keep me interested. I particularly like Sandra Brown. I think that she's really interesting. She's kind of predictable. Um, but generally when I read one of her stories, um, I usually don't know who did it. Like there's usually a twist. The person that I think that did that committed the murder or whatever is usually not the person but I have, I sometimes figure it out, you know, who, or I suspect who, who did it. Um, you know, so, um, and that makes it fun. Um, I love Agatha Christie, um, in particular, um, the Perot books, but, um, but she is highly predictable. <laughs> I generally have figured those out before. Um, you know. Before I get heavily involved in the book. But they're fun to read. And they're, they're interesting. Um, and those are usually. An Agatha Christie book is generally recommended at book club every month um a few months ago um we read and then there were none by agatha christie and that was fun but Oh, I wasn't, I was going to put grandma, but then I changed my mind. I was going to put genealogy. I need to pay attention to what I'm doing. I could still put grandma, but 
grandma looks so young in that picture. She does not look like a woman in her 80s for sure. She's in her 90s now. She does kind of look much older now, but she's, she is, you know, she, once she got, she had COVID last year and it just really took her down. She had COVID at the nursing home and, um, it just really, it really did a number on her. And I, I really think that she's lucky she should survive that because she had it and she had already had the shot as well. She'd already been vaccinated and when she got it and she just, it really affected her health really very significantly. And, um, and although she's doing better, I think that it affected her, her brain somewhat. Um, she's not as sharp as she was, but she's also 97 too. I mean, and inevitably, this is a C, but I'm going to make it an E. Um, that's going to happen to all of us, you know, if we live to be that old. So she's actually, my grandma is actually older than the queen. I figured that out last week when the queen passed away. My grandma is almost two years older than the queen. So... I'm doing really well with this whole thing with uh, um, only eating at lunchtime. Um, I am staying pretty, um, I lost 10 pounds and I'm staying pretty um, consistent with that. I haven't gained anything back so far, um, but I haven't had any additional weight loss aside from that 10 pounds, um, just from cutting back to like one meal a day. Now I don't worry about what I eat during that one meal. Um, but, um, it, it is working. Um, and I've only been doing it for about a week, about a week so far. I lost, I lost the 10 pounds quite quickly. I was, I was impressed. Um, but because I've really had a difficult time with it. The older you get, the more difficult it is, I think, for anybody to like, to keep it off. It's possible, but it's, it's just. It's not easy there. This one, I just took her comma and made that an E. It looks a little bit different from this E, but I don't even care. I think it just kind of adds some interest to the page. Um, the Moore House, Genealogy, and then I think I'm just going to put um, some journaling down here about Grandma. Um, I might put an asterisk there. I like how that looks. Um, so I'm hoping that I can, I'll probably read some more tonight. Um, otherwise I don't even know what time it is. I'm pretty sure it's probably around seven ish. Um, I'm not sure. I do need to fold clothes and I do need to switch the laundry, but otherwise, um, dishes are done and kitchen is swept. Um, I might mop again. Scott steam mopped over the weekend, but it just didn't, 
I didn't do too much. Um, our dogs need to be groomed so badly. And our groomer, we haven't, I don't know if she's out of town or what, but we keep leaving messages. She hasn't called us back. And so we are waiting to hear back. I mean, we've only called like the past two days. But the dogs need to be groomed. They're shedding like crazy and it's just not... It's just making a big mess on the floor. Um, what year was that? 2012. Because it was 12 years or 10 years ago. In 2012. I might have another page that I've already completed that is similar to this one. Um... So I don't want to journal the same thing. Um, but I would like to take the paper, the like the copies that the that the historical society or genealogy society in Clinton gave us and like scrap up those like beside it or at least put it on a page protector. So all that is together. Um to Clinton. To research. A long lost relative. Um. He had an interesting life. I hope that's not the pizza guy. I'm telling you guys. Okay, so between both of my sons and my husband, well, my husband doesn't usually do this. But my two sons, they work really late. They work second shift. And one of them doesn't even live here. But but they will order pizza. And they the pizza and they'll pay for it online. And then they'll deliver it. And they won't tell me that there's going to be a delivery. So like it will literally freak me out when someone comes to the door and like is banging on the door and I don't expect anyone late at night to, to be coming to my door. And I'm telling you, this happens so much because like, it's really one of the only places open. I mean, I think McDonald's is open all night. And I think they go through a drive through sometimes, but it's like a cross between McDonald's and Domino's Pizza. And I'm telling you, I just heard a car pull up and I'm like, oh man, there's going to be a knock on the door and it's Domino's again. And they didn't tell me. <laughs> One of these days, I'm going to eat their pizza. <sighs> Generally, I just leave it on the table and put a, like a quilt over top of it so it stays warm, but. He had an interesting life. Um, that made headline news. And then I think that just behind this, I'll do the. Um, I'll do the, or I'll put the copies, but I didn't really journal too much, but I think that it turned out cute. So, and I was able to use this strip. Um, I wasn't, I didn't use the other strip. Where's the other strip? I was going to use both of, the, both of the strips, but. I don't know where the other one went and like disappeared. That's okay. 
it's not necessary. I was going to put it like maybe right here. Um, I'm bringing across if I found it, but I don't see it. I don't know what happened to it. Oh, well, it's okay. So I guess I'm done for tonight. Um, I thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I really only have one page kit left um, to work on um, before I start making new page kits. I don't know if I'm going to use that kit or not. Um, it is show you because I have no paper left in this one um the one that I have left is this one and there are I mean there are paper there's like four four sheets of paper so if I can get a few layouts done created with this then um, over the weekend, then maybe, um, maybe I'll set a goal to like complete, um, this, like use this kit up and then next week I can, um, break down one of the kits that I made over the summer and, and fill up like all of these again, because I have five of these. So like what I do is I take the iris container that has, the larger kit in it and then I break it down into smaller kits and I'll probably add in some of these leftover embellishments as I see fit um just because I just want to use some of the stuff up as well um because I have a lot of leftovers so and I'm sure there's going to be quite a few leftovers from this kit as well but um but we'll see where that takes us and and um, that's kind of a goal that I have is to film a video next week of breaking down a page kit. So that'll be fun. I know my page kit videos are my most popular ones. Um, but they're not necessarily the most functional. I mean, they're functional when I use them. Um, when I use the page kits, but I don't have, because of my work schedule, I don't have a lot of time to scrapbook. Um, and so that portion of it is slow going and, and there's no point in like just continually making page kits all the time and not using them. That defeats the purpose of making them. Um, so So I try to kind of intermix as much as I can. Um, but I thank you all for watching. I hope you have a good week um, or a good rest of the week. And I will see you next time. Bye.